Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here. I have a bit of a discussion and response video for you today. One of the most common, if not the most common, puzzles you'll have to ponder as a Magic player is, are you going to keep this hand, or are you going to mulligan the hand? It's obviously really fundamental, and a lot of us take it for granted. Every now and then you'll see one of those puzzles, can you find your way out of this board state, can you find a way to win on this turn, etc. But really, the most important puzzle to master is probably, do you keep or do you mulligan? It's really consequential because of how many times you're going to go through that. And to that, I saw a tweet from Luis Scott Vargas who said, it's a, it's a poll, your opponent is tanking about mulliganing. What are you hoping they do? Mulligan, keep, results. Now, obviously this doesn't really matter in a sense because you don't have any control over whether your opponent is going to mulligan or keep. This is just a hypothetical, this is just something to think about, I suppose, but taking it on that, what do you think? First of all, pause the video for just a moment, <laughs> just, what do you think, actually? Alright, we're good? Cool. Now, a friend of mine, Henry Mildenstein, actually made a, a response. He said, assuming my opponent keeps, they think their hand is better than the average 6. If they mulligan, they get an average 6 so I would hope they mulligan. And the logic kind of makes sense, right? When I mean, you think about it, that makes sense. Seven is greater than six, so if they're thinking about keeping seven, it's probably better than an average six, right? And I responded, game one especially, I agree. And Henry and I had a bit of a discussion from there, but then I got to thinking about it more, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized it probably wasn't actually the case. I was probably wrong in saying game one, I agree, which of course means that I don't think that Henry is right. Uh, it does make sense at first though, but for a couple reasons I don't think that's necessarily true. We'll get to the game one or post game one distinction in just a bit, but most fundamentally is actually something that I kind of thought about and then I saw a tweet from LSV that really solidified it for me, said it better than I was thinking myself. My head says that keeping a bad hand is better for me, but my heart just wants to lock in minus one card, though with the London Mole I think I'd rather they just keep. Alright, cool. <laughs> what does that mean? So Henry's assertion is that if they mulligan, they get an average 6. That's actually not true anymore. If we had a Paris mulligan, sure, it was. If we had a Vancouver mulligan, it was, but there was a scry involved. Now that we have a London mulligan, you don't get an average 6. You get an average 7 minus the worst card in your hand. In other words, you get a better than average 6. And so if your opponent is debating an iffy 7, they might shove it for not an average 6, but a better than average 6. And that's why, as you, as I scroll down here, I see not only is LSV, who's obviously a really good player, a really good player, saying that in his head he wants them to keep, but Cyrus Corman Gill saying, oh by the way, Grand Prix and uh, SCG Open winner. Uh, saying, this is exactly how I feel. Depends on the format as well. I basically always feel good when my opponent mulls in limited and never feel safe in non-rotating formats. And I agree with that. And I think it gets worse the older the format gets as well. And then Brad Nelson, also a pretty good player. You may have heard of him before. Shoutouts to Brad Nelson. Shoutouts to everybody in this conversation. Henry, you too. Shoutouts to Henry. Uh, this, since the new rule, I'd rather fight a loose seven than the risk of them drawing a great six. It's just so easy to do these days with decks designed around four of legendaries and redundant effects anyway. So the classic example for redundant effects would be something like Burn. When every card in the Burn deck effectively reads Lightning Bolt, <laughs> Lightning Bolt, or slightly worse Lightning Bolt, or even slightly worse Lightning Bolt, etc. When everything reads three damage or so, it's a really redundant deck. And one that makes mulligans easier to do, Two, it makes it well. Okay, well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna digress. <laughs> Two, it makes it better against Force of Will. Yada yada yada. But I, I don't want to digress. I could. I could ramble on, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's it's not the case that they're just getting an average six. They're getting a better than average six. So there is that. I'm sorry, Henry. On that basis, I think that I would rather them keep. I would rather fight through an iffy seven, assuming that that's what's going on. I say that because the second reason actually pertains to sideboards, and when you start throwing sideboard elements into the mix, 
then it gets really, really weird. See, sometimes the opponent is going to feel like they need to dig for sideboard cards. Y you might, for example, have an opening seven that doesn't have sideboard cards, but is otherwise fine. Do you keep? It might be a perfectly fine hand. Or do you dig for a sideboard card? On the other hand, you could have, uh, they have an iffy hand that has sideboard cards, a hand that might otherwise be risky. So to give the most extreme example that I can think of, just to sort of really solidify this, this is the most clear-cut example I can find. Vintage Dredge. If you don't know a thing about Vintage or a thing about Vintage Dredge, suffice it to say, it's a deck that's extremely good at winning game one. The majority, if not the vast majority of the time, it wins game one. It basically loses to itself if it mulligans into oblivion, or somehow doesn't find its pieces, or the opponent is just really fast as a combo deck, or that, that's basically it. The deck is ridiculously good at winning game one. And consequently, there's a lot of hate brought in against it come, come games two and three. When you're a dredge pilot, you basically hope to always win game one, and then maybe clutch out games two or three. Well, game two, or if not game two, game three. And that's just how it works in the world of dredge. Uh, this means that, for example, when the opponent is mulling, they're going to mull hard for their sideboard answers. Graph Digger's Cage, Leyline of the Void, Ravenous Trap, Yixla Jailer, Rest in Peace, Tormod's Crypt, Relic of... I don't know. I don't know. We're getting, we're getting more tangential, but especially those big ones, like Leyline of the Void. That's the easiest example. If you're a, say, uh... Bug control, your Sultai control, and you have a hand that doesn't have Leyline, but is otherwise a really good hand, do you keep against Dredge? You actually probably mulligan. You probably have to mulligan. Uh, on the other hand, let's say that you have an iffy hand that has Leyline in it. Let's say it's a, it's a one lander with no cantrips, but it has Leyline. Do you keep? Do you think that the dredge pilot is going to find a force of vigor or a nature's claim or, or a hollow one or something to get themselves out from under that before you can really get off the ground? Maybe. Sideboarding throws this logic into a whole different state because of how consequential those individual cards are. It changes the logic. They are uh, over-centralizing when it comes to this decision. And so, for example, if I'm the dredge pilot and my opponent is deciding, ah, do I want to keep this 7? Well, I might want them to keep it too. I might want them to keep an iffy 7 that either doesn't have sideboard hate or has sideboard hate, but might be risky enough that it gives me time to try to fight my way through it. And then this applies to all kinds of decks as well. A Vintage Dredge is just the easiest one to go with, but I play Infect. I may not want my opponent to find a lot of removal, or Malira, or Ethergrid, or whatever. I may not want my opponent to find stuff like that, or Dredge in any format, or Affinity, Robots. I may not want my opponent to find Artifact Hate, etc. Alright, so that's, that's basically it. Henry, I love you. You're working to be a better Magic player. This is, this is why we have discussions like this. This is why LSV brings it up. Um, and to be fair, to your credit, there are definitely players in the comment section in the thread that agree with you too. I don't think that this is one, well, one, it's not a thing that actually matters because we don't have any control over our opponent's mulligan decision, but there, this is one of those decisions where it, there's not a strictly right or wrong answer. All right, that's it. That's, that's my discussion for you today. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.